Hi guys and welcome back to Winding Your Racing YouTube channel. This morning I was working on the uh, golf cart project again, uh, getting the steering system put together. Now the last time I posted a video, I showed you guys how this homemade rack and pinion system works. And what I need to do now is get it connected to the steering wheel. And that's going to be through a series of chains and counter shaft sprockets. And so as you can see, pretty much got things put together. I still need to weld these counter shafts on because they're just doing this. I wanted to get that alignment just perfect right there. And I also made the rack. You see there's two bolts securing it there and I made this mount here two bolts will go down there for today I'm just going to use a couple of the self tapping screws shoot them in there after I get these sprockets welded up but uh, you know so far this is a little stiff in here because this these bushings are made to weld on the inch and a half so i had to cut this tab off and when i did i used my torch to blast it a little bit of a hole in there and it also kind of made it a little bit rough this so it'll loosen up it gave me a place to shoot some lubrication in there that'll be okay so i got this counter shaft secured here and there so so far we are working down to the jack shaft there now hopefully after i get everything secure i can pull one more link out of there because that's a little bit sloppy i think we're gonna have enough room there this one's nice and tight so once i get that welded be able to shoot those screws that'll be done so i'm gonna get to work here and uh let's get this steering put together and work shaft direct okay she's grounded definitely needs to get tightened up. Now, I have a little screw in that U-joint that doesn't want to cooperate. So, a 12 millimeter.
Yeah, everything seems to be working. Except for one little thing, I got the wrong screw in this. Got the wrong screw in this U-joint here. So I'm gonna have to search through my coffee can and find one that'll go all the way through there and cinch that down on the splines there because it's not working. Other than that, I got that secured down there with the little self-tapping screws, call them tech screws. So, I think after I get this all tight, pretty sure I'm going to be able to take one link out of that. I sure hope so. This actually loosened up a little bit after working it, so. This is all going to work in. And uh, so I need some adjustment, but uh, getting the mechanics working today is a big step in. Unfortunately, there's not enough chain there to take a full link out. So, on both of these, I am going to have to put some kind of chain tensioner. This will be easy, just make a little mount and a wheel. This one here, I'm really thinking if I just elevate this a little bit all right here's some brainstorming if i elevate that just a touch maybe that'll give me enough to get a whole link out of there all right that's part of the adjustment we have to make so let me go ahead and uh, work on that i'm gonna have to cut this loose and just elevate it a little bit Hopefully that'll be the ticket. There. Tell you breaking those tacks is not going to be fun. I'm going to put a smaller cutting disc on here, maybe get in there. Well, hello guys, welcome back. Well, I tell you, it's been quite a day. Uh, I did manage to get these chains tightened up and uh but boy was it a bear i had to t turn the camera off because i want this to be a family channel and some of the language that came out of my mouth was was not family oriented so anyways what did i ended up doing remember how this was loose i figured well i'll just lift that up a little bit and this was ultra loose so if i lift this up even more maybe i could get an additional link out of there and well i was able to do that that's it. So, as you can see, rack and pinion. It was built from basically scrap steel. We got counter shaft sprockets from my good friend Rich over there at Motion Sports. And uh, then uh, I hope uh, my son and I don't plan on going quad riding tomorrow because. Uh, well, guess where these chains came from? Yeah, I had to take them off. So, anyways, let's get an idea how this works. And, uh, I know I got some adjustments to do tomorrow, but it is kind of quick steer. You don't have to turn it much, I'll tell you.
can see things are a little loose. I mean, part of the adjustment I'm going to do tomorrow, this thing's flopping around. In fact, I got that towed out a little bit because if I turn real hard in, it'll actually go all the way over and lock into that position, which we don't want. So, we got the mechanics working today. We'll do some fine tuning tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, then I can start working on the back. That's what I want to do. Now, one thing I do have to do here, I'm going to, I'm going to move the seat forward a little bit because I mean, everything's sitting fine, but having to reach out there pretty far. So I can move the seat forward a little bit or actually make an additional shaft. And so the steering wheel has a shaft. And so I disconnect, throw it on up there. And then we got a nice size living room here with the couch. Oh. In the back here, as you can see, this seat is back a little bit far. I want to put a bar across here for the seat belt. So if that was up three inches, that'd be fine. And then I'm going to take a piece of aluminum up. And so this motor, that needs to come back about four inches. So this is going to be pretty neat because what I have to do is come out here to a jack shaft that's going to be closest as close as I can get to the pivot point. Take it on over here. We're going to go ahead and pull this clutch mechanism off and just put a sprocket on here, sprocket on the jack shaft, sprocket there. Uh, this has a built-in clutch and it also has reverse. So there's actually two ways to disconnect the drive. I have a drum coming for the back brakes. I only had one. Now this is going to be interesting because these are operated by cable. The fronts are operated by hydraulics. Now one thing my son suggested to me is like, well, why don't we just put a big disc on the jack shaft and that's how we stop the rear end. But the one problem with that is that you put all the pressure through then this differential. The braking would go through here, the drive would go through here. I don't know if that can handle forces back and forth. So, there's kind of a hit of... This all looks pretty cool. I like it, but uh, I do want to get the, the fine tuning done. I got to get everything tightened up, do the alignment, and... Uh, this one bushing here, I'm going to clean out. If you look here, see all that brass sawdust. Those bushings were a little tight. I didn't really like it, so I used one of these tools here. And get on in there. <laughs> Remove some of that uh, material, and things slide around real nice now. So, this one I did already. This one I cleaned up. That one I haven't. So... I want to get rid of the stiffness of it all, get everything aligned properly, and uh, yeah, and start working on the back. The back is where the power is. Get the motor running, get everything working back there, and it won't be long until we're driving the golf cart. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching today, and uh, be sure to subscribe because... This is going to be going. Then we got that C10. We got the LS53 in the machine shop right now that's going to get put together. And of course, Frankenbug. Don't pay attention to my gas lines out there. I haven't cleaned that mess up yet. So, anyways, thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.